You know when you wake up and decide to get a big chop? That's what happened to me today. Except I'm not chopping my hair off. <laughs> I'm going to be chopping my mottled syngonium. Hello, my name is Melissa. Welcome to Plants and Things. We're talking about plants and things. Before we get into the video though, I want to thank two people. First, Miss Lady Tune for letting me know what that unknown syngonium was. It's a syngonium oritum, oritum. Thank you. I literally had no idea how I was about to go on my investigation to finding out what the plant is. So thanks. Secondly, I'd like to thank my friend Mohubidu who got me this thrifted vase. It's so gorgeous. Um, this is actually what I'm going to be putting in my new... That is a terrible sentence construction. This is what I'm going to be putting the cuttings into. And so I'm really, really thankful to her. She surprised me with it today. Wow, my tongue's like not working today. <laughs> she surprised me with it. And yeah, she also makes like planters and stuff. So I will have a link to her Instagram below. And you guys should totally check her out. But now to the big chop. So the syngonium in question lives on my propagation shelf. This is it. Um, this is where it begins. It's part in this part and it grows up and it's almost three meters long now. And I've actually had to start bending it on the shelf because it was growing into this peperomia hope. And I'm honestly so very sorry about the back litteredness of this video. <laughs> So I love, love, love the mottling at the bottom. Um, here's like one of my absolute favorite leaves on the syngonium. And in fact, this newest vine that is popping out also has this beautiful mottling. And I think that's probably why the plant is called a mottle leaf. But as it's grown up on the shelf, it started like washing out as you can see the pop on this one is not as great but it's not even the worst one um like these ones do not have any mottling which is not great again sorry for the backlitedness but it's very meh but anyway still love the shape of this leaf and i especially love that it's gone like more mature and more mature and now we're in the mature form which reminds me of my trip to mauritius because they had a lot of these syngoniums and alocasias just growing everywhere so i'm hoping that during the big chop oh my goodness look at that leaf i'm hoping during the big chop that this plant doesn't that the leaves do not revert back to the immature form which is something that can happen when you chop a plant back that it reverts back um, and one thing that is should be very clear about this plant is that the mottling on this plant the variegation actually is very very temperamental <laughs> i cannot stress that enough it is extremely temperamental like as you can see these leaves the, the first leaves um had like intense the prop the intense uh, mottling ones they were growing on my bookshelf which provides bright indirect light and then i moved it to this shelf where it was getting bright direct light um which is giving us a break so you can see the plants better so it's getting bright direct light and i thought the reason why these leaves were turning out this way now like this washed out look was because of the bright direct light but look at the cousin of this plant which is growing in brighter director light like it's so pretty it still has like pretty mottling on it it's not the same as the bottom one but it's definitely not like washed out and mach like the other leaves which again love the mature form <laughs> love the leaf shape um and so that theory about the bright direct versus bright indirect might not be a good theory so i'm going to go back to the drawing board and think more about this plant but yes i do like how it's growing and i do like the whole nymph vibe so i'm not going to chop the whole thing back i'm just going to chop it to about before yeah before this leaf uh so you can continue growing up and honestly this plant is an intense grower all of this growth from the first leaf is just from september so highly recommend okay <laughs> i'm ready to cut so i should say being the camera woman and the in the camera person is teaching me a level of 
multitasking slash ambidexterity that I didn't know I needed before. So, yay. <laughs> um, as I said, I'm going to cut over here. Am I going to cut over here? <laughs> Every time I have to cut, I get so nervous um, because I'm like, what if this is the worst decision you've ever made? And obviously that's completely dramatic and crazy, but I still go there. So now I'm like in that moment where I'm like, oh, why are you cutting this plant? And I actually think maybe I should cut more there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> the suspense is going to be too. These, I use normal, normal. Like these are scissors that I use for my other DIY crafts, which actually reminds me of a story of this lady who says every time she takes a scissor, she has to cut things. And I'm the same. I'm the same. So anyway, okay. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, it's done. <laughs> now I'm just gonna take it off. Okay, so actual taking off because the camera woman, the camera person had to take a break to go be the camera woman. So now we're back, the camera person's back. <laughs> So, also, I use these Velcro, is it called Velcro tape? I use that and I highly recommend. Ooh. <laughs> and we're back behind the desk. <laughs> so I've filled some water, I've filled this goblet with water and I have my really long cutting <laughs> and I'm going to propagate it and of course to propagate this guy you simply cut between nodes and the node is where the leaf grows out and where the roots grow out and where the new activated point is going to come from and you just simply chop in between and it's easy to see the nodes on this guy like even if we don't have the leaves because these roots these roots are crazy so you just cut in between um in terms of care this is honestly one of the easiest plants to take care of um it loves water but no not but it really really loves water i'm sorry, it really really loves water and so i honestly just water it thoroughly and i also leave water in the catch pot because i am struggling to keep up with my watering even though i've said before that i'm over waterer i'm no longer an over waterer i think i've become an underwaterer so i just leave um some water in the catch pot i'm like pointing where the plant used to be um and in terms of lighting as I mentioned, it loves direct, it loves bright light, not direct, not necessarily direct. You have to play with the lighting. I've had success with bright, direct light. I've had success with bright and direct light, but clearly in between the plant, like, nope. So yeah, just play around with the light and see how the plant responds to different variegation. Um, and those are the cuttings. Oh my gosh, I love this goblet. Um, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, <laughs> obviously I'm in. <laughs> um, yes, and also I water, I fertilize this plant once a month. So yeah, that's how you get it growing and thriving. But like I said, it's, it's an easy plant to grow. And the only annoying thing probably is the finicky variegation that it has. But yeah, oh my gosh. Look at those cutting. Look at that vase full of cuttings. <laughs> My lighting man, the sun, is setting. And so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave any extra tips and tricks that you might have for how to keep a mottled syngonium thriving. And like the video if you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you next time. Bye.